So, thank you. And uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I am really very glad and happy that I can, on behalf of Czech Hydrometeorological Institute, present uh, the Climate and Phenological Atlas of Czechia. But before I start my own presentation, I would like to say two, two words. Uh, first of all, I would uh, ask the interpreter to apologize my English. It's not so perfect, so I hope they will be able to translate it to German. And uh, the second most important part is that I would like to thank to Professor Machulat and Professor Bernhofer for the invitation for this Anabra Klimatagen. I uh, came to this Klimatage nearly for 12 years, and uh, I can see the development of this uh, meeting and also, also the importance of this meeting. And from this, uh, from this meeting we can see that the climate has no borders, and uh, due and thanks this meeting, uh, I have found many friends and colleagues, and we could start uh, new cooperation and uh, project uh, to solve the climatological problems. So, and now I think that you wonder how how I will present this uh, this both atlases. Uh, it was really difficult for me to, to prepare this presentation because if I put there all the results from both atlases, then you would b will be sitting for many hours and we will not catch the dinner, maybe the uh, excursion to the Fichtelberg. So I have decided to solve it that I brought book by myself. So here you can see the Climate Atlas of Czechia, and if you will be interested in some results of this atlas, uh, you will be welcome to, to look in uh, after I have finished my presentation or maybe later in the foyer. So on the, on the first slide, you can see the very long sen sentence from the first uh, professor of meteorology and climatology in the, from the Prague University since uh, 1894. I put it there to show you that the meteorological observation in the Czech Republic has a long tradition. I don't know if I can, can you hear me if I stay? No, <laughs> it's difficult for me. So you can see that the, I, I try to like this. Uh, 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 the first written reports in the Czech Republic about the about the thank you thank you yeah is it better <laughs> yeah. so so we have the first uh, the first records about the 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 weather and climate in uh, uh, older than uh, 900 years old. Uh, uh, these uh, records are in chronicles. Uh, there are some records about floods and droughts and so on. Very important name in the Czech uh, meteorology is, for example, Mr. Kepler, Stepling, Sternat, and of course, Johann Gregor Mendel from the Brno, uh, uh, Brno Bishop. Yeah. Uh, as the longest uh, complete time series of meteorological observation is in Prague, Clementino, it, uh, it, uh, it, it was established in 1775. Uh, the National Meteorological Institute was developed in 1919, and then it was also established National Hydrological Institute. Very important name in the Czech uh, agrometeorology is Professor Novak, who has established the first phenological network in the Czech lands in uh, uh, 1923. Uh, the, Czech, the Czech Hydrometeorological Institute, not really the Czech, because uh, the name Czech was uh, after the splitting republic to the Czech and Slovak Republic, but the uh, Hydrometeorological Institute was established in 1954, so we have celebrated 60 years a few, few days ago. Uh, 
So, uh, in my presentation, I would like to tell you how does the Atlas came to being, what, uh, what is in the contact, and uh, what is on behind of the hard job to, to, to make such a, such a big, such a big pu pu public uh, pre present, not presentation, such a, such a big book. Yeah. So, it's a thematic cartographic work with encyclopedic elements. Uh, it, it provides the complex view of the climate in the territory of Czechia. Uh, uh, there were 46 authors who were involved to create this, this atlas and it was really necessary to, to make a new climate atlas of Czechia because the previous one was, uh, was issued in 1958. So it was the climate atlas of the Czechoslovak Republic and the second important uh, book was the agroclimatic conditions of the Ch Czechoslovak so Socialist Republic, uh, which was issued in 19, 1975. Five. So the new publication was really missing and the uh, people in the Czech Hydrometeorology Institute know that it's important to, to, put, to put information to to, to the public, to the universities, and so so on. Uh, the authors who created this uh, this atlas were from mainly from the uh, uh, hydrometeorology institute, but also some some of them was uh, were from the universities. This atlas is made for, from, the clima, uh, from the database from the period 1961 till 2000. Uh, there was a long discussion about this period because some people th thought that it would be better to use the typical climatological normal 1961 till 1990. But uh, after this long discussion, they decided to, to use this uh, 40, 40 years period because of the, uh, of the changing of climate to, to put the latest information also into this book. The atlas is uh, divided into 11 sections and the authors decided to put there, in, 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 except of the main meteorological uh, uh, characteristics as uh, air temperature, precipitation, snow and so on, also the drought severity index, also the characteristics of air evaporation and atmospheric pressure. And there is uh, also the uh, uh, the chapter about the, the dynamics of uh, uh, climate. Uh, I think that to put into this atlas the chapter about the drought, it was uh, very smart from, from, the, from my colleagues because we can see the changes uh, in, in, in these years that uh, we have uh, droughts or floods and so on. So, as I already told, uh, we have used the data from the Clydata data, uh, database. The Clydata database runs under Oracle and uh, uh, it's uh, always under, under control. There, there are statistical, and sp uh, statistical controls and spatial, spatial analyst controls and so on. And of course, uh, before publishing uh, and before creating the maps uh, in, the, in this atlas, we have to homogenize data to, to, to control it one more time, not to be there any outliers and so on, not to be, not to be gaps in the, in the observation. So to be uh, uh, really perfect and uh, put the real information to the, to the final reader. Uh, the atlas is mainly from the maps, so we have used the geo, geo information processing, and in the, each map has the horizontal resolution 500 meter, and there are used different interpolation methods, IDV, Kriging, and spline. So, and now you can see. The, um, maybe I can uh, also say that the map scales are one to one million, one to two million, one to five million. And also for the better re reading, uh, the, is the same 
characteristics, for example, temperature is in a red color, uh, precipitation is in the blue color. So it's, it's, it's better, of, it, 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 it was decided for the better orientation for the final, final reader. So uh, the, uh, the most part of this atlas is uh, divided to air temperature and precipitation as the main meteorological uh, uh, elements. Uh, 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 so there, there are maps of with the average annual air temperature, average season air temperature, monthly air temperature, one period air temperature. Also, average annual sum of daily air temperature above 5, 10, 15, and 20 degrees and more. It is useful for the agriculture, for the growing season uh, changes, and so on. And uh, of course, that because we have in the Czech Republic the long-term time series, uh, so there are also some year-to-year -year fluctuations and air temperature change trends uh, at Prague and uh, uh, Brno station. And uh, even though this, uh, this atlas is for the period 1961 till 2000, you can see from this, uh, from this chart that uh, there are changes uh, in, uh, in the last decades of this, of this period. Uh, to the air temperature, more, more, more remarks, so uh, there are also maximum and minimum temperature, air temperature amplitude and thermal continentality uh, calculated according to Georginsky and also there are, there are high number of icy, the icy days, frost days, uh, warm days and, uh, and tropical days because it's also important characteristics for the final reader. And uh, the precipitation have the similar, similar map as the, uh, 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 as the temperature. So there are also average annual precipitation, total average seasonal precipitation, average precipitation in some half year, precipitation continentality and oceanity measured and adjusted precipitation, number of day with precipitation above uh, or, or 0 0.1, and, uh, 1, 5, and 10 millimeters. Maximum precipitation totals, uh, 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 it is made as a annual, annual uh, average annual and uh, max, uh, maximum average from the one, two, and three days uh, precipitations. Uh, also, there is the uh, extremity of precipitation. That's also the, the signal of the uh, importance of this information to put to the final readers. And uh, uh, as I have been already talking about the drafts, so there are precipitation indices, there is a uh, lung rain factor, there is uh, uh, drafts. Uh, uh, drafts uh, dra uh, drugs occurrence process by Palmer Index and uh, uh, standardized precipitation index and so on. And uh, uh, the other chapters, the other chapters are also important. Uh, snow, in the snow you can find the uh, occurrence uh, of the first and last day with snow cover. Uh, the number of days with the snowfall uh, in the air humidity, there is, there is also the daily variation of the air humidity in the evaporation. Uh, there were calculated, uh, for example, sultry days and, uh, uh, and, uh, and so on. In the solar radiation, there is the global radiation, diffuse radiation, direct radiation in the sunshine. Uh, average duration of sunshine, number of day with the uh, clear and uh, overcast days. Uh, in the chapter of air pressure uh, and wind, uh, there are wind roses for the, for, for, from, the, for, for, from some, some stations. Uh, there is also the charts with the <coughs> Uh, occurrence of the gust, uh, maximum gust winds and uh, the average wind velocity. 
And we put also into this atlas uh, chapter of the hazardous atmospheric phenomena. So it is uh, occurrence uh, of the thunderstone, hail, and and fog. Uh, this part uh, was process. Uh, uh, for, for the shorter period because it was difficult to have the all information from the observers to have the the information to be to be controlled so some maps that there is for the period 1981 till to 2000 and uh, uh, as large chapters are the phenological characteristics, so in this part is the beginning of flowering of sweet cherry and uh, emergences, emergence and uh, fruit ripeness of the winter wheat and spring barley. And uh, in the chapter of dyna dynamics of climate, climate there is uh, 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 the relative uh, occurrence of the synoptic situations so also it is connected with the with the air temperature and uh, precipitation the, uh, 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 during by exact uh, synoptic situation and uh, the last chapter of this atlas is the climatic classification so uh, there are three maps uh, about the uh, Capen classification, Quitz classification, and uh, the uh, uh, climatic regions divided according to the uh, uh, old atlas uh, since 1958. So that's all to the climate atlas of Czechia. And uh, you can see uh, the pictures from the flood in Ustin nad Labem in 2002. And now I can fluently go to the uh, phenological atlas of Czechia. So it's the second book I, I took with me. Uh, what was the reason to to process this or to create this phenological atlas of Czechia. Uh, uh, the, f the first step was that, uh, as you have seen, that in the climate atlas, uh, climate atlas of Czechia was the chapter about the phenological characteristics. So we decided that uh, uh, we can make uh, other crops into another publication to put to put the information to the final final reader, and uh, uh, because the importance is uh, phenology is uh, in the recent years more and more important uh, because you can you can measure the uh, climate change according to the uh, phenophase phenophase changes the into the earlier date. So we have in the, in the Hydrometrology Institute the uh, uh, phytophenology. Uh, in the last days there were also the zoophenology, but uh, after some uh, uh, methodology uh, restriction, uh, it, it has changed and only the phytophenology stay, stayed in the methodology instruction. Uh, here is only the uh, why it's phenology is so important. Uh, you can use the phenological data also in the allergology, uh, uh, in the climate change research, uh, and on the here is the. Sorry, I didn't want this. <laughs> uh, uh. Uh, on the uh, on the on the chart, you can see the changes of the beginning of flowering of uh, lime tree. It's the, from the period 1931 till 2011, and uh, in the last year there are negative deviations from the from the average. 
uh, maybe a few words about the, uh, uh, how the phenology developed in the Czech Republic. So uh, the phenological in uh, observation are part of the Hydrometallurgy Institute since 1954. Uh, uh, the phenological network who was uh, established by Professor Novak in 1923. There were also many, many, many records and uh, these records we, we have in the archive of the Hydrometallurgic Institute and they are di uh, di digitalized and uh, we can use them for uh, future research. Uh, there was a yearbook of phenological observation till 1960, and uh, in this yearbook uh, were published uh, the results uh, of the phenological, phenological observation every year. Uh, in the uh, 1983 uh, was uh, the uh, the previous phenological network divided into the station field crops and fruit trees and uh, in 1987 there was a, a network of wild plants so that's why we 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 made the phenological atlas of Czechia only for the 20 years 1991 and 2010 because of the change of the methodology and uh, to have the all data for map creation and and charts and so on. Uh, in 2009 was issued uh, methodology in, in instruction, not new methodology instruction, but uh, in the better way, better form for the observe, voluntary observers. And uh, uh, the phenological maps uh, were always only a part of other publications. So uh, that was also the reason to create this phenological atlas of Czechia. So uh, in this picture you can see the old old maps. It's uh, it's a map uh, from 1960s, and uh, we we observe with volunteer observers, and uh, uh, now we observe only wild plants. Uh, I think that the uh, that the composition of the uh, wild plants is similar like in Germany, Austria and other European countries. And uh, we observed uh, main phenological phases from the uh, beginning uh, of the uh, growing period, such as sprouting, till the end of the growing period, such as leaf fall. Uh, here you can see the density of phenological network in 2010, but it, it, it's not true anymore because in 2013 uh, we have uh, we have cut uh, the the network. Now we have only 25 phenological stations for the whole republic, uh, and. Uh, uh, how came the idea to compare this atlas? So I think that I have already said the most important issues. So uh, it, it, it was, uh, we, we, we have the grant from the Ministry of Education and it was also together, it was uh, closely connected to the cost action 725 and uh, 603. And uh, the map creation, we have used the method Kaidata Dem, uh, Dem with the dependence on elevation. The horizontal resolution was also 500 meter. And uh, there are five basic types of map uh, phenophase. They have the map scale one to two millions fruit species. You will see it later, this, this map. Uh, it's uh, it's the scale one to two million. Uh, the map of spreading, it's a map scale one to four and a half million. Uh, comparison map of one to four and a half million and typization. Uh, the phenological atlas of Czechia has 
eight main chapters. So there is the phenological research in Czechia. Then uh, there are uh, the main chapters of field crops, uh, 10 species, fruit trees, nine species, wild plants trees, 17 species, and wild plants herbs, 15 species. And uh, uh, we put also to this book uh, uh, this additional chapter to, to, be, uh, to, to be more tentative for the, for the final reader. So this is the sixth uh, chapter, Temporal Variability of Phenophases, uh, Phenological Calendar and Phenological Season, and uh, as the last chapter is the Phenological Summary of Czechia. This uh, atlas has uh, 316 pages, 156 map, uh, and 350 tables, uh, 290 charts, and 187 pictures. And now you can see the, how does it look, the map. So it's the, uh, ex is, is the example of the average day of the first leaves of Rowan. Uh, uh, there were also the regul to have uh, the same color, not for the, for the one species, but for the same phenophase. So, for example, the beginning of flowering is a let is in a red flower uh, color. Uh, uh, so you can see the uh, composition of the atlas, and uh, uh, this is the map about the varieties, uh, because the fruit trees we couldn't we couldn't put into the maps uh, because of the lack of the stations. So it was not possible to, to create the map. So we were thinking what to put there. And so we decided that we can also put there the map of varieties which are observed or at, the, at the stations. Uh, and this is the map of the dissemination. So there is, uh, for example, the occurrence of Norway spruce in Czechia, the one regions in the Czech Republic, yield of uh, winter wheat in, Ch in, in Czech, yeah. And uh, as uh, we were thinking also about uh, phenophase uh, onset changes, we put there also uh, uh, some maps, uh, the comparison of the same phenophase in the cold and warm, warm year to see the difference uh, between the phenophase onset and th this is the same uh, uh, comparison of the same characteristics in the cold and warm year. And uh, we have also made the phenological regeneration of Czechia to natural areas in this, in this period according to deviations from the early spring onset, full summer onset, and of autumn onset and uh, duration, average duration of the large vegetation period. And uh, this, is the, uh, this is the charts. Uh, so uh, every species have the charts with the deviations uh, from the long-term average. Uh, because we also put the, the pictures of the uh, pollen Pollen allergens, so we put there by the allergological important species the graphs of the duration of flowering. Uh, uh, there is also the average growing season duration of, uh, uh, of the species in dependence on altitude. And uh, this map is from the fruit, tree, uh, not map chart, is from the fruit trees. So uh, we want to, to have this chapter also full of information. And if we cannot uh, create the maps, we decided to put there more charts. And uh, this is the additional charts, it's, uh, it's from the chapter some of the chapter for the, from the sixth chapter uh, or, or from the variability. 
And uh, this is, you can see the composition of the atlas. Uh, there, were also, there are also tables with calculated phenoclimatic characteristics. Uh, for example, the, du duration, uh, the sunshine duration, the precipitation in the uh, interface uh, period, uh, uh, sum of temperature in the interface period, and so on. So that's all to the atlas. So you are all very welcome to look into into to this book in, if you are interested in. And uh, at this final slide, I would like to invite you to the final conference of Interclim project to Usti nad Labem. This uh, final conference will take uh, will be on the 20th November. And uh, this is uh, this is the thanks to to this Anaberga Klimatage that we could start this project to get together with German colleagues, and uh, it's the, on the regional scale. Thank you for attention. And also, if you want to look some results from Interclaim, you are warmly welcome to the posters. Okay, I, uh, thank you for the presentation. I um, ask for questions to Lenka Heikova. Jörg, there's Mr. Böttcher in the background. Lenka, where can somebody, yes, especially the Climate Atlas of Czechia, where can you obtain it? Where can one buy it? We are uh, uh, at our institute. Okay. But I don't know how many uh, we have anymore. But so, Dasha, do you know it? How many atlas we can we can sell anymore? I don't know how many they have in the headquarters in Prague, but I suppose there are still some of them. Yeah. In, in chapter nine uh, of the climate atlas, you spoke about the soil temperature. How did you consider the variety of, of uh, or the, the different soil types uh, in these charts? Uh, I am sorry, I'm not able to, to answer this question because I am not the author of this of, of this soil chapter. But I will show you. In the in the book, so I, I'm sorry. I I uh, I was a uh, author of the part of the hazard dose phenomena. Any further questions? I have one small one. The typically, we observe that the spring phases, so the, like flowering, are earlier than in the past, but the autumn phases, like uh, fall of leaves, are typically not changed so much. Not Did you observe the same? Yeah, yeah, nearly okay. the same. And I, I think in this year we have observed, uh, I, I can use the word mismatch of the okay. or, or of, uh, phenological phases because uh, some species uh, were flowering together and uh, it's not uh, usually normal that they were in advance. Okay, <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you very thank much. You. Thank you also for the questions. Oops. Thank you.